Beautiful souls, do you have a prayer request or want us to send you healing energy today? Would you like us to be praying for you, a friend, or a loved one? If this is you, go to worldlargestprayernetwork.com to submit your prayer requests. And while you're there, please join our team of prayer warriors. Your angels say that prayer not only opens you to miracles, raises your vibration, and helps you heal, but the more you pray, the more God's presence is felt here on earth. Feel your angels' love right here, right now, as they surround you, and be on the lookout for positive, loving messages that are meant specifically for you in today's episode. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host and author, Julie Jancis. And today we have on the show, Michaela. Michaela has a beautiful angel story she wants to share with us. And I know it's going to bring a lot of hope and inspiration into your life. So thank you for being a blessing and being here with us, Michaela. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. So I, um, I'm going to let you take it away and share your story. Okay. So I wanted to start out by giving a little bit of a backstory for the angel story. And that's in 2019, I uh, moved from, I was living in Birmingham, Alabama, and I had a lot of changes all at once. And I got out of a long-term relationship. I moved to Virginia three days later. Um, I got a job offer. I had never been to Virginia before. And I went from a corporate job to working in construction. And I um, started out as an environmental inspector there and I became an environmental manager. And for those of you who don't know, construction is a whole other world. And it really, um, it kind of broke me <laughs> a little bit. Um, it was just nothing I was used to. It was really intense and fast paced. And it was a lot of stress and pressure at the same time. And, going into 2020 COVID hit and where the whole world stopped, my whole world just picked up and I felt really disconnected from everything. So I had lost, I've lost one of my best friends in 2016. And then I lost another to suicide in 2019 in August. And then in 2020 in August, I lost the third. And so during that time, in construction, we were working 13 days on one off about 16 hours a day. So, and I was doing the job of four people, um, because we had lost some people to COVID in terms of like staying home. Thankfully we didn't actually lose anyone, but my Nana got diagnosed with cancer during that time. And my ex-boyfriend who I was still great friends with, he got diagnosed with cancer and um, my stepmom's mom got diagnosed with a heart condition and she had to go through chemo. And it was like where everyone, it felt like everyone else was having all of this extra time. I didn't have time or space to think about anything. And I got so stressed out. I was losing my memory. You could tell me something. And then two minutes later, you could come up to me and ask me about what we talked about. And I wouldn't even remember having a conversation with you. I was just so overloaded, so stressed. My body started breaking down. Like it was a nightmare. And we, we ended up finishing the project and I was transitioning between uh, my first project to my second project. And I had a lot of time uh, during that time to uh, listen to podcasts in the car. And I was on my way home and I just heard in my head, look up mediumship podcasts. And I was like, why did I just think that? So I was not spiritual at all. I was not anything. Um, at that point in my life, I was pretty cynical. You know, I was, uh, people were dying, getting sick. And I was just like, what is all of this? This is crap. Like, <laughs> and I was like angry, you know, I was really hurt and really angry and frustrated. I was so alone and it was just whatever. 
And so I, I thought, why did I just think that? And then I was like, well, that would probably be kind of interesting. Like, I'm sure it's not real, but, <laughs> and so I looked up one and, uh, I just really related to a lot of, she talked about a lot of going through a lot of things that I had gone through and she ended up having one of her guests was an angel messenger. And so I looked up angel medium. So I found you through that. And, and it was like this Claire audience experience. And so fast forward, I'm getting more into spirituality and everything. And I mean, as soon as I started listening to your podcast, I was getting signs all the time and like the angel numbers, the little synchronicities, that kind of thing. So we're going to fast forward. And my Nana, she, this is, the story is about her, but she had uterine cancer and she beat it pretty quickly because they were able to do a hysterectomy and just a little bit of radiation. Her PET scan came back clear and we were so excited. You know, she had breast cancer about 15 years ago and we were all devastated. So growing up, my Nana was like my world. We would be at her house every other weekend and we just have this really strong bond and my, my sisters do with her as well, but I've always called her my person. And I always have said, if Nana dies, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know? And so going forward, she, um, it's about February of last year. And I'm getting ready to, I was living at Smith Mountain Lake in Virginia, and I was getting ready to go on a date to Roanoke, which is about a 45 minute drive. And she calls me and I just knew when she called, it was not going to be a good call. And she let me know her cancer was back. So she had had a kidney stone, which from the CT scan in the, for the kidney stone, they saw a, a mass in her lungs. And so she called and told me about it. And whenever she called, I told her I was going on a date. So she was like, well, I'll let you go and we can have a, a conversation tomorrow. Like it's, it's going to be okay. Just, I just wanted to let you know before you found out from someone else, but go enjoy your date. And so hard to enjoy a date after that, <laughs> but I, I got in my car and I, just took a deep breath and I just asked my angels for a sign that everything was going to be okay or just something, you know? And so I, I get on Spotify and I click a mood booster playlist because I needed a mood booster <laughs> and the song girl, put your records on came on. And so I have a tattoo for my friends that have passed away and it's three little birds and the song starts three little birds sat on my window and told me you don't need to worry. And ah. I was just flooded with a sense of peace, you know? Yeah. And so I'm driving to Roanoke and I'm feeling a little better um, because of the sign. And I started thinking about just growing up people would always give me angel things. And I was always like, why do people think I love angels so much? <laughs> like, it was like weird to me. I was like, this is bizarre. Um, now I know why it's so that I can look back and see that they were always there and always around me. Um, but I was thinking about this and how I was so grateful that I found out that, you know, angels are real and they are all around us. And right when I was thinking about how grateful I was for that, my radio changed like mid song to a song called I found you as I passed angel lane. And I had never seen that street sign before in all the times I had driven to Roanoke. And I was seeing like one, one, one everywhere. And just all of these little synchronicities were happening. And I was, I just felt so much better. And so the next day rolls around. And uh, so that was a Sunday. So I'm back at work and I have to take my work truck to get an oil change. So I thought while I was waiting, that was the perfect time to call my Nana. 
And I go outside and I call her and we're talking and I tell her about what happened the day before and how, how much peace that brought me. And, um, I told her that I, you know, was seeing one, one, one everywhere and the song and everything. And right then the car in front of me, the license plate was seven, one, one, one. And I told her that, and I sent her a picture and we were like freaking out together and I felt just so much better. And she did too. And she said, Michaela, you know, you asked for a sign. So you received one ask and you shall receive. And I really thought about that after we got off the phone. And so I was driving back to work and I was like, please, like angels, please give me another sign. Like, I really need one right now. Please give me another one. As soon as I like said that little prayer in my head, my phone dinged and my Nana texted me and said, um, your grandpa and I read the Psalms and Proverbs every day and look at what today's is. And it was Psalms one, one, (laughs) one. And yeah. And I was like, oh my goodness. So I get to work. It doesn't stop there. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. I get to work and my, uh, so I was the environmental manager. We had some inspections to do on stormwater basins. So just to give a little context, um, solar farms are hundreds of acres and you do mass grading. So you completely change the land. So when you, you, first build a stormwater basin before you can grade so that any sediment uh, that would run off during a rain event gets caught there before clean water is discharged. So I was going to make sure that uh, all those were built properly and, but it's bare land and there's no vegetation around, you know, for acres. And so I go out there with my general foreman and our quality manager And I was telling them what happened. Uh, They were like two of my best friends and the quality manager is super spiritual and he's great. He sends me little like texts always at the right time. And um, that was saved me during (laughs) working in construction. But so we go out there and I'm telling them about what happens. And this bee flies out of, I don't know where and lands on my leg. Well, I have uh, a big tattoo on my arm and there's uh, bumblebees on it for my Nana. So my Nana used to give us a jar of honey every year for Christmas. And when I went up, she lives in the mountains uh, near Helen, Georgia. And um, I went up and stayed with her for a week in college. And we went to where uh, the like beehive is. And that's like one of my favorite memories with her. And so we, uh, this bee comes and lands on me. Cause I asked for like a big sign in the car too. After that one, I was like, okay, can you give me a a big one? You know, Um, (laughs) because (laughs) why not? Why not? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And so, um, this bee lands on my leg and it crawls up and sits on my hand for 45 minutes. It walked around with me. It was on my hand the entire time. I took photos with it, like posed with the bee. And it was just the most magical experience. Um, And it was everything I needed in that time. And So we end up walking back to the truck, which is like a couple acres away. And I was about to take the bee with me, but it flew away. So it was a chivalrous bee. It walked me to the truck. (laughs) (laughs) I I love it. um, So that was kind of the, the major signs I got. Friend, if the idea of connecting to your angels and changing your life using your very own spiritual gifts sounds amazing and is deeply resonating with you today, I want you to go on my website and check out my angel membership. Registration is open. Sign up today and you'll get access to new course content and events each week and a private community. 
members love how everything you need for your spiritual awakening is all in one place. Sign up today, angel membership. It's incredibly healing. Also, the winner of this month's free reading with me is in the show notes below. Leave a five-star positive review of my podcast or book, and you could be next month's winner. Lastly, check out the upcoming events page on my website, theangelmedium.com, because we have a lot of upcoming events that I know you're going to be interested in. Fast forward to now, she's actually, um, we found out uh, three weeks ago, they gave her two months or two weeks to two months and her cancer just didn't respond to chemo and it's been pretty tough. Um, but two weeks ago I got to, or yeah, a week and a half ago, I went up to say goodbye and I was seeing three, one, one everywhere. And I've been seeing it, but whenever I was up there, it was like a 311 song came on the radio on the way to her house. Like it was everywhere. Every time I looked at the clock, it felt like it was 311 and we were just seeing it on license plates. And I was like, what is this? And so I'm at her house and she is an antique collector and she has antique booths. Her name's Anne. So she's antique. Um, (laughs) But uh, I saw this little sign on her, uh, one of her bookshelves and it says, love one another. And then in really small print, there was something, but it was like the same color as the background. So I couldn't see it. And it was first John 311. So I knew like that was the sign we were getting was like, just love one another, you know? Well, and how crazy is this? I'm in Chicago. I know that you're in Eastern time, but it's 311 here, right here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, I know that spirit. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's incredible. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Chills. But yeah. And, you know, uh, I hope my family doesn't get mad at this, but, you know, we can, my family can be a little, uh, quick to temper and that kind of thing. And I just felt like that's the reminder that we all really needed at that time was just like, that's the only thing that matters right now is loving one another. This is the hardest thing we've ever gone through as a family. You know, my dad's the only child and um, she's only 70 years old. So it's, she's so young and I'm going to try not to cry right now, but she, um, growing up, so my sister just had a baby, uh, a few weeks ago and little baby Ada. And so my Nana prayed for three things. She said she wanted to keep her hair (laughs) through the chemo, which she did. (laughs) And she wanted to see all of us and she wanted to meet Ada. Mm. And, um, she said that, you know, God's given her all of that and she's ready to go to the house. (laughs) And, um, I was just, it was beautiful to see her with my niece and my nephew. And I'm so glad my sister's gotten that, but growing up and not a, but, but growing up, I was so excited that my Nana was young because I was so close with my great grandfather and my great grandmother on my mom's side. And I was like, my kids will get that with you, Nana. And I was always so excited about it. And so like, sorry, no going there and seeing her with them. It was just like this reminder of like, I won't get that. Sorry. And I asked her, I asked her, um, I said, when you get to heaven, will you, will you send me a husband and a baby? And she was like, yes. And, um, it's kind of funny because, uh, my best guy friend, um, he and I have 
it's been obvious that we've always had like more feelings for one another. And um, we just both weren't at places where we were ready for a serious relationship and stuff. And this past week, uh, we started dating and it came like right after all of this. And like I've always said, like, I hope he's not going to listen to this, but (laughs) I've always said that, you know, if I date him, like I will probably marry. Like, I feel pretty confident about that. And, um, so he left for, he had a trip planned, a dive trip to Mexico and he left on Saturday and he gets there and he sends me a picture of the sunset and the clouds look exactly, I can send you the picture. It's incredible, but the clouds look like a grandmother reaching out to a baby. (gasps) And it was just like the angels gave me this beautiful I mean, it's like an undeniable photo in it. Like you can clearly see it. And it was like, and there where her arm like reaches out to the baby, it like makes the shape of a heart. And wow, it's incredible. And I feel like it was this like promise from the angels that when she is in spirit, you know, she's going to be with my future kids, you know, and she's going to hold them and love them before I even do. And it gave me so much peace. And I'm obviously devastated knowing that I'm going to lose her, but it just, I've just seen having gone through so much loss with friends and everything, I get signs from them all the time. Like three little birds are everywhere all the time for me. Like my friends will even point it out to me. And just like anytime I have a bad day, that song, Girl Put Your Records On, finds me. Um, And like whether or not I'll be in a store or whatever. So I just have this like immense peace because of knowing that the angels are all around me all the time. And like we're never alone even when we think we are when I was at my lowest and my darkest like that's when I found spirituality that's when I started to realize my connection with the angels and I've always had it I mean I'm named after one and my birthday is 11 11 like yeah. and my dog's birthday is 11 11 oh that's so, amazing yeah. that's amazing um <laughs> That's so amazing. Well, and the other thing is, is like, she gets to be part of your children as they're here on earth, getting to understand their intuition. She gets to help connect them with that. Like, I know my dad is doing that work with my daughter all the time. And I think it's so special. Um, I talk about this in the book a little bit that they don't just come through to us with angel signs. Sometimes they're whispering thoughts into our loved ones our partners, our kids, our parents. And you see that reflected back in what your family members say to you, where you're like, oh, I know. I know that's grandma from the other side coming through right now. Um, And it just brings a total another level of validation because I think it's one thing to know that we're protected. Um, but as mamas, you know, like we just want to make sure that everybody around us is protected too. And it kind of allows us to take this big sigh of relief, like, okay, I don't have to do everything because the other side really is looking out for everybody in my family too. And it brings peace. Yeah, I agree completely. And that's so I have a lot of friends who um, are also really spiritual and I, I cherish them so much. But what makes me so excited is when my friends that aren't like get a sign and they're excited about it, you know, and I feel like we're all these like little like beacons of, of hope for other people. And that's what I really want like this story to bring to people like going through loss is that like, we're still so connected. Like we have so much support through the loss and then after the loss as well, you know? Yeah. 
A hundred percent. Oh, I love that, Michaela. Um, um, so if everybody could just bow our heads together in prayer for a moment, and I just want you to feel the crown chakra at the top of your head opening wide. And I want you to feel God's oneness energy coming through the crown chakra at the top of your head. And just very quickly filling your entire body, filling your entire auric field, feeling, filling all of your chakras with God's oneness energy. And when we pray and we bring energy into this world, it doesn't come from our human self. It comes from God's oneness so that it's limitless and that it doesn't drain us of our own energy. It actually fuels us and energizes us. And I want you to see that continual flow through the crown of your head, through your heart, through the palms of your hands. And I just want you to see this oneness energy going to Michaela's grandma, going to everyone within the world who is experiencing a passing or going through that life transition at this point. And as you see that energy moving towards them, use your free will intention to ask God, universe source, to provide those who are transitioning right now with angels, loved ones from the other side that bring peace, that make that transition the easiest transition, most peace-filled, loving transition that it could be. And we ask God, Universe Source, to also bring this energy through of peace, love, comfort to everybody who's a family member who's experiencing that loss with them and is experiencing grief. And as you see this, I just want you to see the angels comforting those who are grieving, being by their side, showing them angel numbers, showing them signs, speaking words of faith and messages into their thoughts. And I want you to take a moment to add your own prayer in right now as well. And this we pray, amen. Amen. And Michaela, I have no doubt, you know, it's interesting when I'm in my sessions, uh, the force of a grandmother energy on the other side is like a freight train. Like if their grandchild wants something or is going after something or, you know, need something, holy cow, they are <laughs> right there bringing them like every step of the way. And it's, it's oftentimes they'll come through in a session and say, do you think I would let you go your entire lifetime without what it is that you want? They're like, it's not possible, right? So if anybody out there is listening and you've got that grandmother on the other side, that grandfather, just listen. They want you to have every single thing that it is that you want to experience in this life. So you talk to them, you tell them about this, and you better believe that they're working on your behalf 110% to bring that through into your life and and it gives you a reassurance like beyond a shadow of a doubt Michaela I have no doubt you will be a mama you'll have that partner and um just everything that you want coming into your life yeah 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 I'm excited for you. you it's a really fun time yes <laughs> I'm so excited. I feel like she gave Mark that push. Like, <laughs> like I feel like she's like kind of going in and out right now, you know? Yeah. And I feel like when she's been out, she's like been like, boop, boop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. Let's move this along, mister. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause it was like a change of heart. Like he was like, this is what I've been wanting and it's right in front of me and I've just been too scared. And so what am I waiting for? And I was like, really? <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Perfectly oh, I timed. love it. 
<laughs> That's so perfect. Michaela, thank you so much for being here thank on the you. show today. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been great. Oh, you too. And I'm going to be praying for your grandma and your family and you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you very much. You too. Mwah. Yeah. Anybody listening to the show who has an angel story, please submit them. We'd always love to hear them, share them here on the show. You can go to theangelmedium.com and submit your angel story. Beautiful soul, thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Julie. You know I'm all about connecting you with messages from your angels and loved ones on the other side. If you've been listening today and you're super excited and just have to know which angels are sitting around you now, who's connecting with you, and how they're supporting you, go to theangelmedium.com. Register for a virtual session. You can do a reading with me or a member on my team. We're all incredible. We all talk to angels daily, and we can help you in making sure that your angels are doing the best they can to support you and guiding you to the life you want to live. Virtual sessions, they're only offered on my website, never, never, never offered on social media, only offered on theangelmedium.com. Sign up today. And if you're the person who's really excited, you're ready to go all in developing your unique spiritual gifts, growing your intuition, starting your own healing business, you can sign up for my Angel Reiki School to become a certified angel messenger. That's for the healers among us who feel called to grow their intuition to the max and serve humanity with their gifts. You'll learn energy healing, mediumship, how to deliver angel messages, and business mastery skills. That's the Angel Reiki School. You can find more information on theangelmedium.com or DM me over on Instagram at Angel Podcast with any questions you have. Friends, before you go, connect with your angels by placing your hand on your heart, taking a deep breath. Imagine a doorway filled with God's unconditional love in front of you. I want you to step into that love in front of you. And I want you to feel it as it fills your body, your chakras, and your auric field. Now ask your angels, what would you have me know today? and open yourself to the positive, loving messages they have just for you. 